Once again, uh, thanks to everybody for making the time to be on the line today um, for our information session around Hispanics and Philanthropies Next Generation Latino Philanthropy Fellowship Program. My name is Anne Hand. I'm Hispanics and Philanthropies Senior Program Manager for Leadership and Equity Initiatives. Um, and we're just really excited to see so many of you on the line today and see the interest that this um, request for applications has garnered. Um, we just completed our inaugural cohort um, into where we had a, a year-long leadership program in 2016, and we have more information on that as part of the presentation. Um, and so hopefully some of you have friends and colleagues who have done the program um, and have, have recommended that you apply as well. Um, so we're going to get started. For those of you who are not familiar with Hispanics and Philanthropy, is, there we go. Uh, we are a transnational network of foundation leaders, corporate leaders, and social entrepreneurs dedicated to strengthening Latino communities. Um, we feel very strongly that our work is more important um, in collaboration um, and more powerful in collaboration, and that is why we always work um, as a convener and as a conduit um, for leaders in the social sector to get together and, and make change for the Latino community. Um, our mission is to strengthen Latino leadership, voice, and equity by leveraging philanthropic resources. And we really focus on um, identifying solutions and high-impact groups. So by groups, we usually mean grassroots nonprofits, um, working on the most pressing issues facing Latino communities in the U.S. and throughout the Americas. We invest in innovation to support those organizations, scale services, and increase impact. Um, we provide leadership development opportunities to Latinos and Hispanics in the philanthropic sector. And we also try to develop new mechanisms for increasing investments in Latino communities. So um, an example of that is our funders collaborative uh, model for strong Latino communities. Um, over the past 30 years, uh, HIP is 33 years old. Um, our headquarters is in Oakland, California, and we have offices in New York, North Carolina, Miami, and Mexico City. Um, and this year, this coming year, we'll be celebrating our 33rd anniversary. Um, and so over the course of the past uh, 30 years, we've been able to increase funding um, for the Latino civic sector in very tangible ways. Um, we've provided capacity building development and trainings for over 600 Latino nonprofits, and we're a very strong advocate um, for increased diversity within the philanthropic sector, particularly for Latino communities, but also working um, in concert and in conjunction with um, other colleagues from other communities, such as ABFI, um, the Association for Black Philanthropy, uh, Black Foundation Executives, um, Native Americans in Philanthropy, and, and other groups. So what we're doing, and this is where um, this program really comes in and where you all come in, is that we're constantly moving the needle to see where we can best promote growth. Um, and one of the ways that we've found very effective um, over the past few years is focusing on leadership in nonprofits and philanthropy. Um, and what we, we look at nonprofits and philanthropy in the social sector, I would say, in a very broad way. Um, we understand that individuals kind of move um, over the course of their careers between different elements of the sector. Um, and we understand that diversity of leadership always encourages creative and effective problem solving and solutions um, for these really entrenched um, social issues that we all care so deeply about. And additionally, um, we feel very strongly that within the social sector, um, we need a, a real leadership table that better represents modern American society. And our piece of that, of course, um, is within the Latino and Hispanic community. And that is who we work with, and that is who we support. So more, a little more information about this um, leadership development fellowship opportunity. Um, and this is a, you can see a picture of some of our fellows who um, were at our gala last year, which was in Sonoma. Um, and what we're really, in the, you know, this is kind of a very broad strokes overview. Um, but I think that it gives sort of a general idea of who our target is. Um, and please bear in mind that there is, of course, um, variation and flexibility. So, um, you know, my colleague Alana and uh, Marinello and I are more than happy to um, answer questions um, or, you know, have any conversations if you have questions about, you know, whether you fit or how you fit um, or if you would like to refer somebody. 
um, and how you think they would fit. Um, but in general, we've found that these are the people who really benefit the most from our programming. And so um, I think that it's fair to characterize the um, next generation leaders that we work with um, and that we have worked with most successfully um, as US-based mid-career nonprofit social sector um, and foundation staff, I would say, you know, we've had some people who work in grant making programs in government or in other types of advocacy programs in government, um, both federal and state level government I and mean, local government. Um, Self-identified as Latino or Hispanic, um, committed to principles of equity in work, and um, it's, I think it's very interesting um, that this concept of equity in the social sector has been gaining a lot of traction over the past few years, and we're We've been committed to, to equity-based work um, since Hispanics and Philanthropy's founding, and we continue to be committed to that. Um, the real commitment in terms of your own time um, would be 10 hours of web-based leadership trainings over six months in 2017, and that would include participation in um, in an online community of practice. So, um, you know, and a way for you to communicate with peers virtually. Um, and really kind of dig down into these kind of these issues around leadership and equity that you um, are finding personally that you are interested in peers are also finding that you'd like to kind of dig into. Um, we do have as part of this, this program, we do have the potential for larger commitment with um, an opt-in mentorship opportunity with Latino Foundation leaders. And we will have some scholarships available to attend our leadership convening, which this year we'll be having in um, San Francisco in March. Um, I believe the dates are March 22nd and 23rd. So the benefits for um, being accepted as a fellow um, is that you will be part, you'll be a member of a national community of next generation Latino fellows and um, this does not just include the 2017 cohort but will also include the 2016 cohort and um, future cohorts as well um, moving forward. Um, you'll be able to connect with a community of driven, motivated, like-minded peers. Um, you will be able to develop and refine your equity-driven leadership skills. Um, though we do manage the majority of this program online, with again, with these opt-in um, opportunities. And um, it's interesting because I think that, um, you know, everybody's kind of coming to this point, um, seeking out this type of opportunity at a different point point in their professional life as well as a different point in their personal life um, and we want to understand we want to acknowledge and, and um, honor that and respect that as well and so that's why you know we have this primarily web base um, which we've found to be very very beneficial um, to to many of the people who have participated in the past um, you'll also be invited to future hip events um, and you'll be able to access resources from hip and our, our affiliate groups um, so Going into a little bit, because um, there are a lot of, always a lot of questions about, you know, well, what are you looking for, who, who what's the profile, um, and what I really just want to highlight here with this slide is that, um, you know, last year we had 45 fellows from 19 different states, um, and I think, and as I mentioned, from all different, you know, parts of the social sector, um, and I think that it's just important to mention that we're still very committed to that type of diversity. Um, it, it's also important for us to mention that this year um, we've partnered with the Cleveland Foundation and um, through that um, partnership we're able to open up more um, spaces to individuals who are based in the Midwest, um, particularly in the Cleveland area, and so we're very excited about that as well. Um, and our other um, funding partner on this is the American Express Foundation, which has a national scope in terms of its leadership activities. So, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very, we can paint a very broad scope, and we, we're, we're always excited to connect um, diverse individuals who are leaders in their own communities um, with, with like-minded peers. This is just um, to give you a sense of what the, the actual programming looked and curriculum looked like last year. Um, so this is the, the cycle, uh, the topic cycle, um, where we would have an informational webinar um, on a leadership-based topic. There would be an opportunity for community-based response. There would be opportunities to engage with articles and um, interviews and videos and other 
um, other things through um, you know through our online community of practice um, and kind of you know keep the conversation going um, moving on to the next webinar cycle and I think that we're gonna um, we had very good feedback on this and we'll be keeping the same basic model um, we're considering creating smaller discussion groups um, with the fellows so that people will have, instead of, you know, having, you know, this massive group of 45, there'll be more directed um, ways to engage with your peers and have conversations. Um, but in general, this is, this is the, the very broad, you know, way that we've managed um, the topic cycles. And then the actual topics that we covered this past year um, really were about spanning the bridge from personal identity to institutional effectiveness. Um, so basically, how does ha creating and, and supporting your own sort of authentic leadership style make you a more effective change agent within your um, organization? And how can you translate that to future, um, future job opportunities? So um, you can see here, these are the first three topics. Um, and the goals for each of those topics, they might change slightly this year, but I think that we're pretty committed to um, you know, incorporating feedback from last year's fellows um, and maintaining the integrity of, of what worked. Um, and so, here's a little more information um, about the web-based learning community, um, which which I mentioned. Um, so the idea is again to take the the videos as sort of a a point of departure, um, to take the webinars as a point of departure, and then um, you know allow facilitated conversation and deepening um, of, of these ideas that have been presented in the webinar and then moving on to the next topic. So how to apply, um, please submit your applications directly to us at Hispanics in Philanthropy. Um, that's the direct link, which um, I believe is also in all of the, um, all the information that we've sent out and is available on our website, as well as um, partners who are supporting us in, in this dissemination. Um, the deadline is by the end of the day Pacific time um, on November 18th, and then we'll have um, uh, a review committee um, to, that will review the applications, and we're committed to um, acknowledging um, the final status of all applications by December 20th. Um, and so then the training webinars will be scheduled uh, for the nine months of next year, first nine months of next year. And so just a few frequently asked questions that we've been getting. Um, there is no age limit to apply, but again, um, we found that the people who benefit the most from the program are in this kind of mid-career um, bracket. Um, thinking about previous cohorts, um, the average age was in like mid to late 30s. So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. And of course, there are younger people who can benefit, older people who can benefit. Um, but that's that's what um, that's what we found to be most effective. You do not need to be a HIP member or grantee to apply. Um, if you are working in the public sector, you can apply. You do not need to be a U.S. citizen to apply. Um, but in this case, um, we do need. Um, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you still need to be U.S. based. Um, there are no fees to apply and participate, and again, um, you know, we keep these other opportunities opt-in because we want to make sure that it's um, flexible, flexible and respectful um, of your own professional and personal commitments um, beyond this program. And um, Hispanics in Philanthropy is extremely committed to offering um, more and um, integrated opportunities for leadership development moving forward. So that is pretty much what we wanted to cover today. Um, and now I will turn it over to everybody on the line. If you have questions, um, please type in or raise your hand. If you're raising your hand, I will unmute you. Um, and if you want to type in a question, um, you know, I'll be able to see it on the screen. So let's give us another minute or two. Great, we've got a question. Okay, great. So we've got two questions in already. Um, so Daniela is asking, when will applicants be notified of acceptance? Um, so notif applicants will be notified by December 20th, 2016. 
Um, and we have another question from Efrain. What are the main components of a good application? Um, I think that what we are, what we're really trying to understand um, from applications is where people have already been in their career and how they want to move forward and how they see this type of leadership training and these types of um, connections and you know the, the benefit of, of you know participating in a program like this um, as something that that can support their own um, their own career path and growth. Um, as I mentioned before, HIP is very committed to this idea of um, you know working in networks and being a convener um, and all of these ideas that really you know just underlie the fact that um, we found that you know in in the social sector and in the philanthropic sector. Um, people work much better in community than, than in, um, you know, having these kind of isolated um, attempts at, at broad-scale social change. So um, we're interested in, in individuals' personal commitments um, to equity and to developing their own careers. What it, okay, so there's a, there's a question from Vincent. Um, what is the application process for the opt-in mentorship with Latino Foundation Leaders? Um, so once um, once everything is processed and the initial applications are um, you know they're done and, and the committees reviewed everything and everybody's been notified, um, then there'll be a, a another um, kind of sub application process for people who are interested um, in the mentorship component, um, and that'll be part the way that we did it last year was that there was kind of a, there was a, a commitment to the principles of the program, um, a commitment to, um, to participation, um, you know, to this, these 10 hours of the webinars and the online um, engagement. Um, and then what we'll probably be doing again this year is, um, is having part of that form. Um, you know, are you interested in the mentorship opportunities and what, um, what exactly, you know, would you like to get out of an experience like that? Um, does that answer your question, Vincent? And again, this is also because we don't, um, we, we want to be respectful of everybody's time and we understand that, you know, filling out a, a very, very long application at the beginning when not everybody would necessarily be interested in all components of these opt-in pieces um, is just something that we want to to be very um, respectful of it. So uh, we've got a couple more questions. Um, what has been the composition of the cohort in terms of sector and geographic location? Um, so the pa this past year, um, the cohort was about half in the philanthropic sector, um, about a third in um, in nonprofits and about a sixth in government, um, and then there were, you know, a couple of people here and there who were, um, you know, launching their own kind of social ventures or, or consulting firms. Um, and then in terms of geographic location, um, I would say so. You saw the map um, of the 19 states and DC, um, and there were definitely clusters. Um, so we we had quite a few. Um, individuals who are based in LA, in New York, in Chicago. Um, and I think that we're very, um, you know, we're, we're very aware that, um, you know, we, we understand that, you know, different Latino and Hispanic places and communities within the U.S. Um, are very different. And there are places where Latino communities are emerging or not necessarily integrated um, into other types of, of leadership development programs uh, regionally or locally, and we want to um, we want to be very aware of that, um, and we want to be um, to be understanding of that, and we want to be very deliberately inclusive um, of these emerging communities as well. So we really try to strike a balance, kind of um, along all of these different elements that, that I've just mentioned. I mean, it's it's more of an, I would say it's more of an art than a science. 
Um, how many open slots are you accepting applications for? Um, so we are, that, that's a good question, Magali. Um, last year, um, we had about 100 applications and we had a cohort of 45. Um, and I think that that's, those numbers are something that we can, um, we can, we can certainly, um, you know, go higher on. I think, and I think that we want to go higher on them. And I, my sense for this year is that we'll be accepting um, between 55 and 60. Um, and I really can't tell you how many applications um, we'll be receiving um, because the deadline's not for not for a few weeks. Um, can you provide an estimate of the cost to attend the HIP event in March? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. That really just depends on where people are coming from um, and what kind of travel expenses will be. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I can't really provide an estimate of the cost there. Um, next question is, how does the HIP engine program connect or operate um, independently from the American Express existing engine leadership program? Um, so the HIP program is um, is funded in part by the American Express Foundation, um, and in general, um, I mean we we are you know at an institutional level, of course, we're we're connected with other um, other American Express funded projects, absolutely, but um, we operate independently from. Um, from other American Express funded projects. Um, Janine, is, Janine has two questions. Um, is there a max number of fellows for any given state or in general? No, that we don't have a hard maximum number of fellows, Janine. Um, it's, again, it, as I mentioned, it's just more about um, the applicant pool. I would say, I would just mention that, um, you know, I, I mentioned the, the sort of percentages of, of which parts of the social sector people were coming from, and I think that we're also committed um, to increasing uh, representation of nonprofit leadership. Um, I think that that's something that, you know, we see is, is very important um, to equity-driven um, work within, um, within the social sector more broadly. Um, and then, is the HIP event the only opportunity to come together in person? Um, so no, um, it's not the only opportunity to come together in person. Um, but I would I would just mention that um, you know, for example, this past year, um, some of our sorry, I mentioned areas where there were clusters. Um, so in some of the clusters, um, the the groups of fellows who were all based there, um, you know, they got together kind of on their own. Um, and they were able to, to put together, you know, um, platicas and other types of, of activities um, that made sense within their local context. Um, and I think that that's something that, you know, of course, it's, it's amazing if people um, want to take the initiative and, and do that. Um, but I, I do think, um, you know, it's, it's kind of an... It's more of an open question. The HIP event is sort of the main national event, though. Um, outside of the HIP event in March, are there other costs associated with participation? No, there are no costs associated with participation. Um, and the, the HIP event is opt-in. So there's no fixed financial cost associated with participation. I hope I'm answering everybody's questions. So we're almost at the half hour, and um, I'll give everybody another couple of minutes to gather their thoughts. But um, but I would just really, you know, if you're thinking about applying, just apply. There's no cost to you. And, and um, you know, we really are excited about reviewing the applications. Um, 
last year, it was just a really fantastic process. And um, you really see how um, the, the amazing and exciting and interesting work um, that people in, in our community are doing and the drive that people have to um, connect with each other and then go back out and continue to work um, in their in their chosen field but in a more effective way so we're just we're so excited um, about about this process and it's a very I would say a very um, a very powerful and positive um, experience to review the, the applications uh, so we've got one more question if we're with the foundation currently, how will the foundation's name appear in HIP Amex information, website communications, et cetera? Um, so this past year, um, we had people, so um, people applied as individuals. They did not apply um, in their current positions. So what we did, and, and um, you can see this in the press release from this past year that's on our website, we identified people by their name and the state that they're based in. We did not identify them by their by their foundation. Okay, so if that's love, thank you, Simone, and thank you, Juana and Magali and Efrain and, and everybody who has submitted a question. Um, once again, you know, please feel free to reach out to me, um, to reach out to Alana. Um, if you have any questions, um, again, the deadline to apply is um, November 18th. Um, we're excited and hopeful to have a broad cohort that represents, you know, the great diversity we know you all are doing in your work and who you, and, and represents who who you all are um, personally and where you come from and what you value. Um, and we're just, we're so happy to see this response. And again, um, please feel free to reach out directly. Um, or if you have any friends that, you know, could, or colleagues who couldn't make the webinar um, but you think would be interested, please feel free to send them um, the application. And, um, and we're just very excited. Thank you all so much. Um, take care. Bye.